Hey Viking fans, it's been next man up lately, so we're going to talk about Blake Brandle, backup left tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, next in 3, 2, 1. Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, at Skull World. Now, make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. If you do that, you'll be entered in my contest to win a bobblehead, Spin Doctor bobblehead, by Chuck Foreman, autographed by Chuck Foreman. Make sure you go to ChuckForeman44.com. On checkout, use Skull15 and you'll get 15% off at checkout. Now, also, on January 3rd, I'm giving away that jersey up there, autographed by Chuck Foreman, the spin doctor himself. Again, checkforeman44.com. Check out, use Skull15 for 15% off. That is in the description below, among other things. So make sure you go check that out. Also, I'm gonna talk about Blake Brandle. I put a bunch of links to videos I'm Blake Brandle, so you can check him out for yourself. I got uh, draft analysis, his pro day article from uh, when he was at Oregon State, uh, highlight video, breakdown by Brian Billick, um, former linebacker for the Vikings, and he does the media stuff for the Vikings. He does um, breakdowns of players, video breakdowns. Pretty, uh, He did one at, uh, when he got drafted. So go check that out. I'm going to give you my fair evaluation of of Blake Brandle. He was a round six pick, 24th overall. He was expected fifth or sixth round. Now, I'm not going to lie. His size alone made me think that he was a bigger value. If I'm not if I'm seeing him play right now and I go I forget that and I just go look at his video, his highlight tape he shows a lot of promise, and his size is fine. Um, maybe they think he's too long. He was six seven, all these things. Maybe he just they just thought he was too tall and lanky to play the position. I don't know. He drops down to the sixth round. Um, he he actually you you can go check it out. He did a he went and trained, not just for the draft itself, but trained on the off season going into the draft to get ready for the NFL. And I think the Vikings lucked out that we got that left tackle. Now, I don't think he's a swing tackle. I think I think this offense either plays you on the left side or plays you on the right side. I think of a Darian Lowe, however, might go into a swing tackle position. But right now, uh, Blake Brandle may have found himself as a really, you know, a pretty high-end backup left tackle. Um, so he might be looking at contracts coming up. And that's what I want to talk about. So whether or not maybe he can sneak into a starting role in the NFL and he might play his way and price himself out of Minnesota. Now, we there, and I also get in some contract information. Let's actually do that first. Let me find Blake Brandle's contract right now. I, uh, you know, he's 20, he's on his 26th season. No, he's 25 right now, 2022. He is base salary 825,000, cap numbers 825,000, zero dead money. They could they could literally get less let him go and they wouldn't owe anything. Obviously, he's played himself out of that. Last year he made 660, base salary cap number is 440. He's he represents 0.4% of our cap hit. Now, I think the Vikings even though he's not under long-term contract might be able to do like first right of refusal on a contract with a player that's haven't hasn't reached a certain tenure, <laughs> especially since he's not even pl- played three years in the league. So I think we at least got him for one year more if we want him, and I believe we want him now after he's uh, stepped up, next man up. Now I'm still overcoming a little. Uh, I got sick and I haven't put out a lot of video. Trying to save my voice as best I can. I'm trying to drink water so I don't cough in this microphone. But I appreciate you sticking with me. So I went back and watched the highlights. And what I saw was a guy who could finish. And um, and 
and uh, the video you'll talk you'll see if you go down in my description below you'll t they'll talk about his ability to finish now I saw him run block on a second level he combo block goes to the second level Devis he was devastating blocker in college but this was college how was he in the pros now what we saw this last game is that the whole line didn't run block for anything and weird thing is that they pass block a lot better than they run block this back past week and Blake Brandle I think I saw on Wobcast 2.0 shout out to him he'll be on my show on Wednesday on the Skull Experience with the GG Sports guys Jamie and Casey so check that out Wobby is going to be on our show it's awesome I'm going to talk about defense but on his show they brought up the stat that he got like a 72 rating in pa pass blocking now, against the Cowboys, it was just awful the whole game for him. But it, Kirk Cousins recently came out and said, hey, Blake Brandle was a big reason we won that game in Buffalo because he came in when when we lost Derisaw to a concussion. He played really well the rest of the game, and there was a lot of dropbacks in, in that game. What a way to tee off, right? And he was going against an all-pro defense defensive end the rest of the game that was an amazing way to step in let's forget about dallas nobody played good against dallas but going up against a really good pass rush in this last game brandle held his own he didn't get a huge um score apparently because the run blocking was so terrible on our offensive line this last game that none of them did but his pass blocking along with others pass block really well so just just going so his contract is you know he got a decent rating in pass block this this last game. Let's talk about what he was thought of when he was coming out of the draft. In fact, let me bring up his measurables. Let me do that. So his pro day results back in March of 2020, hand size 10 and a half. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Arms 33 and a quarter, and eh, a little bit on the low side for someone as tall as he. Wingspan 80 and 5 8, not bad. Uh, right, his weight 308, 40 yard dash 531. That's where he fell behind. He's not an athlete, right? He's not an athlete. Darius, on the other hand, is on the elite side as far as a you know athlete goes. 20 yard dash 3, 10 yard dash. Uh, 1.85. So this not this guy's not set any speed records. 225 pound bench press for a guy um, as tall and lanky as he am. His arms aren't, you know, he's not in the 34 inch range, the 33 and a quarter. So I 29 is not bad. He's got good strength. Vertical jump 31. That is that is pretty good for his height, his size. 308 pounds, 31 inches. Broad jump nine. Pretty good. Any, anything over nine for an offensive tackle is going to be pretty good. 20 yard shuttle, 496. Three cone drill, not great. Not good. 797. And let's see. Plus six pound, 40 time range, 527, 534. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is, but apparently you throw six more pounds on him. He runs a slower 40. I don't know. But that that is showing what kind of prospect he was. So it was the speed, probably. Probably brought that down. It wasn't his size. It wasn't as you know physical measurables. It was as probably his speed. Now, because his tape looked good, you think um you think the scouts would put more weight on how good his tape was, and I thought it was really good. Six seven, man. Six seven. Just worry about what kind of bend you have at six seven. Can you get down and get pad level with these guys, especially? You know, maybe a defensive end that's only 6'2", right? But he does it. He does it very well, I think. Uh, Brandle, Brandel, pronounced Brandel, which is, I don't know, Brand, people call him Brandel for some reason, but it's Brandel. It was four-year starter for the Beavers. The Oregon Na Four years. He started all 48 games, if I'm not mistaken. The Oregon native was a two-time class 6A All-State pick at St. Central Catholic High School in Milwaukee. After a redshirt year in Corvallis, Brandel 
stepped into the starting role. The first three games, he lined up at left tackle. Then coaches moved him to right tackle to the final nine contest. He started all 12 games at left tackle as sophomore, junior, and senior, earning team captain status in 2019. Pac-12 coaches voted him second team all-conference last fall as well. This is, again, this is his draft profile. So uh, it's, you know, outdated, but this is what they thought of him back then. Draft, this uh, by his Lance Zerline, NFL analyst, he says priority free agent. So he didn't even think he was a fifth or sixth rounder like other draft experts may have thought. Overview, Li- likely tackle the guard position switch due to his lack of length and consistency in pass protection. Lack of length. I don't get that one. Brandle is durable blocker who lacks guard mass, but he works on the nuances of his position, which helps his cause. He understands the angles and techniques, but is an average athlete with below average core power and play strength. He gives too much ground to bull rushers, which is concerned no matter which position he plays up front. He doesn't figure to be a plus run blocker in any scheme. A spot on a practice squad should be his goal for 2020. So he wasn't thought of very well. He's playing above it, I believe. Strength started all 40 ga- games in his career, plays with smart footwork in his initial steps, takes proper angles, getting to second level cutoffs. Very true. Runs runs his feet through contact. True. I, this guy finishes. Drive flipper through target and gets vertical through backside zone blocks. Will flash his hide hand. And if we'll flash and hide his hands to fool pass rushers, unique trait. Works with effort and strain, fighting for early position. Here's his weaknesses coming into the draft. Frame lacks thickness and density. Core strength is below average. Just a modest push can bounce him back into the pocket. Plays with excess amount of forward lean and waist bend. Below average upper body power. Pass pro base is a little too narrow. Full average recovery, athleticism, and strength. So, a lot of it says about strength and his athleticism. I don't know about his strength, but I could see the athleticism. He gave up a sack uh, inside pass rush against what well, guy guy faked out, came in and just leveled Cousins. Um, and I think I think it has a lot, you know. So that makes sense. A lot of this makes sense, but. For a guy that came in as a backup, and we won two games against two winning teams, he played in, you know, the, we'll throw out the Cowboy game. Um, he didn't really know he was going to start until, like, the day before. And everybody played bad. I mean, everybody on the line played bad. But this last game, and especially the Buffalo game, this guy came in and played really good. He had a week of preparation. He really only got burned one time in the Patriots game. I liked it. I, I think this guy's got a, a future as a backup in this league. As a starter on a bad team, maybe. I don't and maybe if he switches to right uh, tackle or be but swing tackle, if he could play the right side, he has done it in the past, as you read here, I think as a freshman. You know, but it does take a year to learn to get used to doing the right side again. They got him as a left tackle. I think we should keep him there as our backup. I think it's the best backup we had in a while based on the way he's played. I like him. Let's keep him. We got him one more year, I think, for sure. Now guys, in the in the description below, you'll see a lot of a lot of videos. Go check them out. Get to know Blake Brandle. Get to know your team. I appreciate it. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment. That will enter you into my contest. Win that jersey behind me. Getting rid of that January 3rd. In about two weeks, we're going to give away the other bobblehead. So, Skull Vikings, let's do it. Let's beat those Jets. Let's go. Let's Skull. Cue the music. Thank you, Viking fans, for listening. Make sure you catch my other episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Skull Vikes.